Welcome back to Cryptic Craft. Between you and me, I'm a little bit stuck. I've been thinking for a long while now, there's a better option than Ender Pearls, isn't there? It's the Elytra, of course. So, I'm gonna go get an Elytra today. I'm also gonna get a ton of shulker boxes. I've been getting all my equipment ready, and I've now got a brand new bow. Let's go find an end city. Oh. Let's go. And it's got an elytra. For those of you that are new to Minecraft, the elytra can only be found in end ships, sometimes found in end cities, a structure exclusive to the end. They allow you to glide and even fly when you use firework rockets with them. If the word elytra sounds familiar to you, it's the name for insect wings in biology. If you aren't yet subscribed, make sure you do, and let's get back into the video. Here we go. can't say enough how much I hate bridging over the end. You are no longer useful to me. Why are there endermen in here though? Woohoo! We got an elytra! And I almost forgot the dragon head. Right, let's go on to the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments if you want more uh, kill montages in the future. Moving on, I found three more end cities with ships within relatively close proximity of each other, and one more tiny end city without a ship that had three shulkers and no chests. I think it looks pretty cute to be honest. I then located an end gateway nearby and headed home. <clears throat> headed home. <coughs> Headed home! Finally. Technically, I did still have to go through the end portal, but it's pretty much home. Come on. Now, I think we should take a little break from our area and have a look to see what other people have been doing on the realm. So, let's go do that. And just before that, I'm going to show you guys what I got from the end. I might as well. I'll give you one frame. So, if you get your pause game right, you'll be able to see. First base we're going to look at is Cryptic Kieran's. Now, this place is rather quaint, I have to say. He has a really nice little axolotl aquarium in here with some sea pickles, which I think are quite funny. And it's still pretty much the same since last time. He's still got this scary headroom, which I... I'm scared of. So, it's still basically a little cave with... Uh, 
some small rooms and then a bit of a strip mine in this direction and uh, this is actually connected to Crazy Coco's base. Oh my god, that sun flare is awesome. Crazy Coco's base is over here. It's still just a starter base, but I think it looks really cute. I believe it's based on uh, a post she saw on Pinterest, I think, or Reddit. I think it looks really cute here. And she's got a little sugarcane line going. Oh my goodness, this goes pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, get a bit carried away. Yeah, I really like this little base. It's really cute. Next base we're going to look at is P Bob's base. It's actually really close to my base. It's on this shattered savanna. And uh, when in single player, if I crank up my render distance, you can actually see both of my islands from from here. I haven't actually been able to test this out. I'm pretty sure there are trip wires here, which means if you go through here, oh, that's supposed to open. I don't know why it's not opening in time, but whatever. He's got this cool little hanger thing going, and you can close this redstone door. That's pretty cool, I think. Hang on, let's, let's open up again so we can get out. Uh, I guess I'd do that. Oop, ow. Oh, shattered savannah. God damn it. Don't tell him, but I actually used his bee farm. I used it a while back when collecting the uh, copper variants that I needed for the oil rig build. It's not super efficient, it's not automatic, but it's still good. So there are my offshore farms, that's my starter base, and that's my mega base island. This is Tornado's base, we'll go check it out. Yeah, he's got this pretty cool, like, deep slaty geode sort of thing going on. I think it is supposed to be a sort of geode, it's got some quartz instead of calcite, some amethyst, it's pretty cool. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, he has a, I, this is a, this isn't a full diamond beacon, by the way, it's, it's, it's hollow. Don't, don't tell him I, I told you that. Over here, he has a lot of terraforming to do. I don't know if he's going to do that soon or not. It's a cool little base. I don't know where his other, the other bits of his base are. I believe he had a different base before this one that he moved out of because he, he wasn't liking it. Getting to Flash Monster's base is going to be so much faster now that I have an elytra. So last but certainly not least is Flash Monster's base. And we have been here a couple times before in previous episodes, so you guys might be a little bit familiar with it. This is the basement of his starter base that he made really quickly, like way before anyone else made their starter base. Because Flash Monster is definitely more of a, a builder than someone who wants to grind through the game. We're both kind of the resident builders of the realm. I quite like this little starter base. It looks cool up here. Is there glass here? No, there isn't. What? I think this starter base was a, an unfinished project. Like he started doing it and got some glass in, but for some reason there's no glass. Oh well, it's whatever. He's got a villager farm. Uh, I think that's a breeder. Yeah, that's a breeder. He's got an iron farm. He's got tons of farms here. And if I can find it, yeah, there we go. Showed this in my last episode when I was looking around for dirt, I believe. He started moving his villagers to the area that we discovered last episode. So let's let's go there now and see see what's new there. He's even got a zombifier here. That's awesome. Yeah, he's definitely been zombifying them, curing them, getting them down to low prices because he started getting all this stuff in. Now I need to figure out how to get out from this side because. Uh, it's unclear. Aha, yes, here. What, what is up here? There's... There's nothing up there. There's just a... Oh, damn it. Flash monster. Ow. Okay, finally out. But the main event here is definitely his medieval village that we can now fly up to see. Oh my god goodness this place is beautiful this place is so cool i believe it's oh, oh my axe as i was saying i believe it was inspired by a build by a mythical sausage doesn't this place look awesome like i think even though there's snow here the difference of having moss where snow doesn't naturally form on moss in comparison to just snow everywhere is such a nice feature and it makes this place seem so much more vibrant without just snow being everywhere the attention to detail on these especially with the snow layering like look at this look at this snow layers are literally the thing you can be the most detailed with 
in Minecraft and he decided to go all out. As I said last episode, well done. This was a massive build. This this probably took him around, you know, 20 hours or so. At least. At least 20 hours. This is awesome. Flash Monster has been a very busy bee. Honestly, I think he's probably the best builder on the realm. Let me know who you think is the best builder based on what I showed you. I may have missed some stuff made by P-Bob and Tornado, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, I don't know where they have all their stuff anyway. So, that was a tour of everyone's spaces. Uh, currently, no one is online, sadly, so I wasn't able to tour it with them. Hopefully, I'll be able to start collaborating with some of them more. And I think I might do some of these sort of world tours every... 10th episode maybe I think it'll be a cool thing for people to look forward to if they want to see how much progress everyone's been making so as the final thing I thought we might do today we're going to look through what I got from my end busting a couple of things from the end I've got some end rods I didn't really want to get too many we've got some potions of healing which are pretty good and got some brewing stands and some shulker and dragon heads, which are pretty cool. And this is the original eight obsidian from breaking that end chest with a fortune pickaxe. And then we have some uh, horse stuff, so some saddles and some armor. It's nothing much really. And then we have some pretty good. Why am I getting? Go away. After fixing that weird pop-up on Minecraft, I waffled on for the next minute or so about how great my luck was with my loot and chance. Just bear in mind that we do have the double shulker shells data pack active, but as per usual, it wasn't working properly. Anyway, I then took a look at the gems and metals I got and forgot to mention emeralds. So make sure to leave a like and a comment and let me know what your favourite part of the video was. And on the right hand side of the screen you have the next episode or the previous episode depending on when you're watching this. And on the left hand side of the screen you have a video that the algorithm decided you might like. So click on one of those and I'll see you guys next time.